Hi, my name is Piotr. Uh, today I'll be speaking about Numeric Array. This is a new container for storing uh, numerical data. My name is Piotr Wendiker. I work for World for Research and today I will tell you a little bit about a new object that we introduced in version 12, Numeric Array, which is a compact representation or for numeric arrays. Um, so I will start from a brief explanation. Why, why do we even need that? What was the motivation behind developing yet another array object? And then I will, I will talk about the construction and, and conversion between various types of, of numeric arrays. Mm. Next, I will uh, show you some details how to use numeric array in a library link, and I will finish with the current integration of numeric array in Wolfram language and future plans. All right, so briefly, what, what do we have right now and, and why are we introducing uh, a new object? So uh, we, we have a sparse array for a long time. Not so long time ago, we introduced structure array. They are used for similar purposes, that is to store structured or unstructured sparse data. Um, so just, ju just quickly to show what, what we're gaining when it comes to memory here. So I, I'm, I'm creating the sparse array that is not that small. Uh, if you look at the dimensions, 256 by uh, 6569, but it only takes uh, well, uh, 3000 bytes to, to store that data. It's, it's because the, it, it's very sparse. The density level of, of that array is, is, uh, is very small. Uh, if we wanted to store it as a dense, dense uh, list, the, the byte count obviously is, is much bigger. So th that way we can reproduce basically very large uh, sparse data sets using sparse or structured arrays. Uh, uh, now byte array. For storing row bytes, one dimensional stream of row bytes that is basically integers from zero to 255, we develop an array object that we call byte array. Uh, and again, this is done uh, as efficient as possible. So by default, let, let, we're storing them in packed arrays. So, so I'm generating here the, the list of random integers uh, uh, of length uh, one million, and then well, the byte count is, is eight millions. That's because th these are 64-bit integers. So each, each one takes uh, eight bytes. So that's, that's what we have. Um, well, we can convert that, that data to, to byte array. And you already see that in the type setting, it, it just takes one megabyte. So eight, eight times less memory. Um, so that's byte array. And now packed array. It's, well, it's not really documented, but I, I guess everybody knows that we have it. <laughs> We don't have system functions for it, but that's, that's why, if, as you can see, I'm, I'm using uh, developer uh, context functions uh, as the utilities to, to work with packed arrays. But, well, this is uh, an efficient container for storing dense, dense uh, numeric data. We support three types, uh, integer, real, and complex, 64-bit signed integer, Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, sorry about that. Yes, it, it's 32 versus 64. But somehow, I really think that at some point we drop 32 and <laughs> go to 64. Uh, so yeah, integer, real, and complex. So, so basically, three three types. Uh, but we know that, that there are more than than that. that. There are more efficient types. For example, byte array can store integers from 0 to 255 efficiently. So we cannot have that as efficient to, to, to store, store it in, in a packed arrays. Um, well, but whatever we support in packed arrays, it is stored as efficient as, as possible. 
and uh, many many built-in functions generate uh, packed arrays. For example, random integer does, uh, and that, that's the function that we can test if it, it, it really is packed array. We can actually unpack that using another uh, utility from the developer context, and if we unpack it, well, it it is much worse when it comes to memory. Um, all right, so uh, that's what we had, and what's missing? Well, I, we want to have a container that can store all C++ fixed width integer types. Uh, I, there is a link here, I'm not gonna go there, but it's basically int 8t, u int 8t, and, and so on. So starting from one byte, then two bytes, four bytes, and bytes integers. Uh, why they are useful? Well, many file formats actually store, store the data in that way. So if you want to import the, the raw data efficiently, don't take uh, more memory than, than need that, that, that's the container we want to use. So the, the, I'm giving here the few, few examples, HDF5, audio, image, or video files. They, they all usually store the data as a, um, one of the C++ fixed with integer types. That is usually less than 64 bit. Um, another reason, we don't, we didn't have the container to store uh, uh, floating points of single precision, basically floats or the complex equivalent, complex of float. So float or complex of type float. Uh, now we can do it with numeric array as well. And finally, uh, this is something that is hopefully coming, but it's not there yet. We also want to support half precision floating point numbers. But this is called binary 16 in the IEEE standard. And this is, well, not really natively supported by CPU, but it is natively supported on, on, for GPU, and, and, and it's useful for, for GPU computations. Like if you do CUDA or, or neural networks training, that's, that's where you get the speed using half precision floating point numbers. Um, all right, so numeric array, that's uh, how the syntax looks like. We basically have three different uh, arguments. It, well, three, 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 yeah, three different arguments. So, so let's start from this uh, middle case, which is, I think that the, it's gonna be most useful. And for version 12, we support 12 types of um, numeric arrays. <laughs> and here is the list. Um, so as you can see, um, all the uh, fixed width integer types are already supported. Uh, float and uh, complex of float is also supported. And real 32 is basically equivalent of, of, of the uh, C++ float and complex 64 is basically complex of flow. And we also support the types that are supported in uh, packed arrays, well, except Mint, which is platform dependent. Here is everything is kind of platform independent. So, um, so that is complex 128 is equivalent to uh, packed array uh, complex type. Uh, real 64 is basically double precision floating point number. Um, all right, so how to create numeric array? Well, give it a list and, and specify the type. And that's, that's it. And th 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 this is our typesetting. You, you saw that typesetting before, that that's our summary box. So the, the, what, what you can easily access here, you, you already see the type, the dimensions, and, and also uh, the list of the first few elements. Um, okay, so there is no uh, specific other functions developed to do the conversion between numeric array types. That, so we have the constructor and converter implemented in a single function. And you may be familiar with that concept. We already have that concept in image or audio objects. We use constructor and, and, and converter in a single function. Well, so, so to, to convert it, you, you just uh, pass the first argument to numeric array, it's already existing numeric array, and, and then 
you specify the output type you want. So that was uh, two argument syntax. Uh, now quickly about one argument syntax. Uh, well, we don't specify the type in, in this case. We just pass it an array. So we try to guess what we have the heuristics. What, what would be the most compact representation of the data you, you're passing to, to numerical things. So for example, here, the, the numbers from one to five, well, we decided that unsigned integer eight is the best type here. Well, it could be signed integer eight for this one, but we're not really losing or gaining anything. Right? As long as they are all positive, we can, we can go to, to unsigned integer eight. Um, uh, okay, this is basically repetition of what I already said. Numeric arrays require less memory than packed arrays most of the time. Um, so packed arrays, uh, uh, 8 million bytes, and then converting that to um, numeric array, we get 8 times less. Uh, Numeric array constructor also takes different uh, arrays and it can convert them to, to numeric array. So for example, sparse array can be easily converted to numeric array. Same for structured array. Uh, we can also very efficiently convert between byte array and numeric array. This is uh, uh, as efficient as possible in a sense that uh, if we can, we don't even do any uh, memory copy. We just replace the head. The reason is that byte array and numeric array are underneath the same data structure. This is basically the different head. Only. So you can think about numeric 1D numeric array of type unsigned integer 8 as a byte array with just different head. And that's why if the ref count is, is of the expression is equal to 1, there is just the head replacement as, as fast as possible. And same is true if you convert byte array. So th this is, uh, again, new, new behavior for the byte array constructor. You can now give it a numeric array, and it will just generate byte array, as long as this, this numeric array is 1D and is of the given type of the unsigned integer 8. Otherwise, it will fail. Um, OK, the, the last syntax, uh, we also introduced the coercion method here or actually, yeah, a coercion uh, argument that can take four different values in, in version 12. Um, the default value is clip and round. And what it does, it clips the specified range and rounds reals to integers. So here is an example. So I have minus one, 2.2, .2 and three, but I want that uh, constructor to, to convert or change that value to, 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 to fit the unsigned integer eight. And that's what happens. My minus one is converted to zero or clipped to zero, and then 2.2 .2 is converted to two. And we, we get unsigned integer eight numeric array. Another method, uh, we call it clip. It only clips the specified to, to the specified range. So in this case, minus one is changed to zero, but say I, I wanna do this with, with the clip method, and it's gonna fail because clip does not uh, round non-integers that in here we have the floating point numbers to integers. So th this method will fail for this input. Uh, round, uh, as uh, the name says, it only rounds. So it doesn't clip, which means that now I have minus one here and it's not working because it's not, it's not gonna clip. And finally, yep. Uh, wait, the, the clip, okay, you want to go to back to clip and uh, 2.0, no, not this one. That's not failing, why, why would that fail? It's, we're not losing any procedure, so yes, I, it's, it's smart enough to, to well, Okay, I should probably mention it's, it's uh, all, all the pages are marked experimental. If, if you <laughs> think it's uh, something is, is uh, not what, what you think, it, how should it behave? Let me know. 
the sooner the better. But that, that's the way it, it behaves right now. Um, check. Uh, well, it, it checks if, if all the values are, are compatible. If something is not right, it's going to fail. So here, for example, 2.2 is, is not going to be rounded. If I had minus 1, it, it would also fail. So these are the four coercion methods we, we introduced. Um, all right, uh, not much time left, so, so let me go uh, quickly here. Uh, there, are, uh, integ there is an integration of, of, of this new object numeric array in the uh, library link. So you basically can use now both numeric array, you can efficiently pass numeric arrays and byte arrays to and from uh, your library function. Um, at the uh, C, C++ uh, end of, of, of library link, these uh, objects appear as uh, M numeric array. Uh, but M numeric array, as if you are familiar with M tensor or M sparse array, M image, they are very similar. This is basically a pointer to a data structure that is passed by reference. Um, so how are we doing this for, uh, if you specify the uh, your uh, library function, you can pass numeric array by specifying library data type of numeric array or library data type of byte array for, for, for byte array. Um, but we can do more. We can actually do the memory management for those who really want to get as, uh, as efficient uh, passing as, as possible. We we allow you to pass uh, a reference. Don't do the copy. By default, we, we make a copy, so it's, it, it's very safe, and we, we take care of the memory management so that that copy is, is going to be garbage collected. But there are other uh, memory uh, management. Uh, uh, the, the, there, is a, uh, there are other cases for memory management. You can, you can do the constant passing, and in that case, we actually passing a reference. And that means you should not modify the values that you get in the C++. Otherwise, it's, it, it can basically crash, or many bad things may happen if, if you do it. But uh, on, on the other hand, uh, you're saving memory. You know, you can you can save that copy every time you're passing the numeric array or byte array to um, to the C++ code. Exactly the same thing. The, the same memory management uh, is for byte array. So that was for input arguments. The output is uh, well. We have only two types: either automatic or or shared. For uh, How, how would you use it? Well, we have a new header file distributed in, in Mathematica 12 layout, which is called Wolfram Numerical Array Library .h. That's how it looks like. So first, uh, the basically supported types that correspond to, to, to the C type. Then we have the conversion method. There are more methods here than I described, but I, I really don't have time to go over the, this. But um, <laughs> And finally, the, the list of functions that are supported. A again, whoever is familiar with what, what we have for tensors, this is very, very similar. So, so should should be very easy to use. The, 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 uh, the one new fun functionality is the convert type function that allows you to basically convert between the data types of numeric arrays. Um, so quickly, uh, given that header file, I, I have a first numeric array uh, uh, demo, what I implemented here is the uh, reverse of, of uh, 1D numeric array. So that's, that's the code. The, the notebook is already up uploaded, so I'm not going to go over the details of the code. Um, um, uh, well, create library generates the, the DLL for me, and here is my function. But that, as you can see, the input argument is numeric array. I'm, I'm passing it using the constant passing, and, and returning is also numeric array. So let's create a numeric array and use that function. 
So that's that input numerical array takes the numbers from one to five and I get it in reverse as the output. There. Uh, byte array demo. So I get very similar what what uh, when it comes to the C++. First include the header files, uh, all necessary uh, initialization, initialization, and so on. Well, what, what's happening for, for byte array, I'm basically reading uh, raw bytes from a file and, and store it in, in, in byte array. Um, so again, the create library, create a function, and apply that function on a uh, give image. Um, we have a rows.give file in, in the layout, so I'm passing it a file path to that function and it returns the byte array. And actually, I can show you that this works correctly by importing that byte array. That's basically the same if you just call import on, on that file, on that give file. Um, okay, so that's uh, that's the last slide. What what's already working and what's not working <laughs> in twelve um, functions that accept numeric arrays. So first of all, uh, numeric array, as as you could guess, uh, is is basically atomic object. So atom Q returns true uh, on 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 any numeric array or byte array. But for now, array Q returns false. Uh, I really hope this is going to change, or it should change, but we're not ready for it in, in 12, 12.0. Um, if you want to get the uh, packed array, or in some cases, it's not going to be packed array, but it's going to be just a list of, of, of numbers, uh, you, you can use normal. So normal on, of a numeric array gives you a list back. Usually it's packed, but uh, as in this case, but for cases like uh, well, two to the power sixty-four minus one, we cannot store such number in a packed array. So notice that uh, what I returned is not packed; it is just an expression. Yeah. Uh, other functions that work with numeric array, so functions like length, equal, first, most, min, max, work. Um, Um, other category of functions uh, extracting the elements, parts, take, drop, also are supported in version 12. However, this is a, uh, one limitation that you should be aware of. The reassigning a part doesn't work. Doesn't work today. That, that doesn't really mean that it, it may, <laughs> we may still have uh, this supported in 12. If not, then definitely 12.1. It will be supported. Um, other functionalities that already use numeric array in version 12. Uh, import export, for example, fits, but import and export uh, allow you to, to either in, uh, get or, or, or store it in a fits file. Numeric array is same for HDF5. Uh, neural networks, uh, big updates coming in version 12 for neural networks. Net decoder and net encoder will accept and will return numeric arrays. And uh, this will give you uh, around uh, uh, speed up of two for, for, for some kinds of net encoders. Um, and I should mention that uh, we also have a new compiler coming in, in, in version 12. And the new compiler supports all the types that are supported in uh, for, for numeric array, it's just not integrated yet uh, enough so that we, <coughs> well, we, uh, we will do it again. We will integrate it fully, hopefully very soon, maybe to, maybe next, next release. So future versions, uh, uh, the, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, half precision floating point number, we definitely want to add uh, arithmetic and statist statistical operations on numeric arrays. Uh, numeric arrays. Then ob obviously functional programming constructs like map and scan and, and more import export 
formats we should also start accepting and, and, and returning numerical rights. So these are our plans that for, for version uh, 12 and we, we really hope that uh, version 13 will have the full support for all Wolfram language functions that operate on lists. Thank you. Like arithmetic operations on numeric array. Well, it's it, it, it's complicated, and, and you have to think about the coercions between the types, right? You have the I don't know the integer eight, and then integer assigned integer sixteen, right? What, what would you do? I mean, we, we, this, is, the, this work was really needed to, to, to implement a new compiler, so we kind of have it. It's not, we need that extra layer to, to, to integrate it with, with numeric arrays. But we have, have all of these tab coercions and, and, that, and how it should all behave on, on arithmetic operations. Well, right, we, we have to have these heuristics. We have to have you know, automatic behavior. You obviously want to, maybe you want to do that manually, coerce the, to the common type and then do the uh, arithmetic on, on the common type then. But, well, we have to do that internally anyway, right? But we have to make some assumptions, right? Given two different integer types, we have to decide what, what to return. Well, what, what if you divide, right? One integer divided by another one. We cannot store rational numbers. Right? And we don't have all of this figured out yet up to, the, to the very end, whether we fail or, or somehow uh, convert both of these arrays to, to floating points and return floating points. Well, I guess these are, these are two options. <laughs> Uh, what, not a number, uh, not yet, but hopefully at some point we will support. Yes? Well, I think all, all, all part syntaxes are, are supported, except the reassigning the part. That doesn't work, but yeah. All right. Uh, well, I, uh, if it's possible to return numeric array, we want to return numeric array. But it's, it's the same question, right? If you do the sign on, on an integer numeric array, what, what exactly would you expect? Would you expect actually a list of, of, of symbols? Or, or would you expect a numeric array of, of you know, floating points? And we lose the precision. We go from infinite to, to machine precision, right? It's, Okay, if no more questions, then thank you.